You have probably already covered this in lab. If not, you will probably do so rather quickly, but um, just so you have it from a different source, let's do a walkthrough on WordPress and what happens when you log into your WordPress account. Um, so when you log in, this is probably going to be the first thing you see, and this is actually um, not the typical dashboard that you may have seen me talk about in class, uh, but we do have a couple of different options here. So uh, the first thing is you're probably going to see this reader tab, and what that is is WordPress is trying to find other blogs that it thinks you might be interested in. So uh, for instance, you can go in and, and search for, you know, I'm, I'm into hiking, so that might be something I want to go through here and search for some hiking blogs, and I might possibly want to follow some of those uh, accounts as well. So um, that's what this is. So if you get to this page, don't freak out or anything like that. Um, WordPress is just trying to get you to collaborate or find other blogs that you might enjoy. Uh, but what we really want is we want to go right here and click on my site. And so I'm logged into the SJMC at TXST account. This is the School of Journalism's blog on WordPress. And you can see it's providing us some analytics, so that's good. Um, you can go through and, and look at you know how many people are viewing your, uh, your content, uh, where are they coming from, things along those lines. Uh, you can see for February 4th, um, we had a couple of views. All of them came from the United States. Uh, one came from Facebook, another came from search engines. You can see who wrote the most, things along those lines. But this still is not the dashboard that you want to be at in order to actually post. Um, so what you want to do in this screen, if you look right here, there's a link or a, a, a part on the dash on the sidebar sidebar right here that says WP Admin. So if you click on that, it will then take you to that dashboard that we need to uh, be uh, writing our content in. Some of you will not have that. So WordPress is a little weird sometimes. This may not be there. What can happen if that is your scenario and you log into WordPress and you're on this screen and you cannot find this WP admin right here, all you have to do is start a new tab and then open up or start typing your URL and do dash WP admin. Okay, so uh, forward slash WP dash admin. Sorry, let me rephrase that. It's your URL.wordpress.com slash WP dash admin. Uh, if you click on that and you're already logged in, it again will take you to this dashboard. So once you're here, uh, remember as we discussed in lecture, posts are where we're going to be working because uh, we are making blog posts. And I want to add a new one. So now I'm going to walk you through everything that you can do inside of a post here on WordPress. Uh, so remember, you'll have a headline and you'll have the body. Um, the headline, I'm just doing this as a test. So uh, I'm getting ready to take one of my classes to Bastrop State Park. Um, so I'm just going to write mobile storytelling students to visit Bastrop State Park. So that is now my headline. And then here I would start writing my blog. So um, I don't have any pre-prepared content, so I'm gonna very quickly, um, so Texas State School of Journalism and Mass Communication students will head to Bastrop State Park in late February as part of a mobile storytelling in the, it would help if I could spell, in the uh, park course. Professor Dale Blassingame is teaching the course with 19 students enrolled. They'll um, spend a weekend in the park and um, they'll produce social video content for Snapchat, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram that Texas Parks and Wildlife can use to um, encourage other young people to visit our state parks. Okay, so that would be like one paragraph of content. You can see I have um, 
three, uh, it's like three and a half sentences really, because this is a complex sentence. Um, a typical paragraph in a blog is anywhere from three to five sentences. Anything past five sentences, you probably want to break off and start a new paragraph. Uh, remember, your content needs to be scannable, so we don't want huge long chunks of content. Um, make sure you're double checking the instructions in terms of um, what you need for your blog post. Again, most blog posts will have at least three paragraphs, so let's just pretend that I've also written these other paragraphs, um, and I'm going to do four just for, uh, for grins there. You, of course, will have different paragraphs. This is just an example here. So I want to show you a couple of things that I can do within just the text itself. And you can see right here, I'm in the visual tab. Um, so this is the WYSIWYG editor here. It's what you see is what you get. And remember in lecture, I mentioned that a lot of these are just simply like using um, Microsoft Word or Google Docs or anything along those lines. You can hit this toolbar toggle and it will open up even more options for you in terms of that. So one thing you might want to do is potentially put in a subhead or a subheadline. Um, you know, it needs to be relevant to what you're talking about. Um, so maybe I'm going to, let's say this paragraph was all about um, how they're only working on their phones and everything will be shot and edited on the phone. So a subhead for that will be going mobile. And I might just want to go in and bold that. And so now I have, again, we're thinking in terms of being scannable. I've got this subhead here that would lead me perfectly into this next paragraph about students producing all that content strictly on their phone. Um, the other thing you can do is if you notice right here, you've got a drop down menu with some other options. So I could make this a header. Um, so I could just hit header two and that would basically do the same thing that I just did with a subhead. It's just a little bit different font size or anything like that. Um, I can go in here and bold uh, something else if I wanted to for some reason. I just highlight it and hit that and it'll make it bold or you can make things italic. Um, so you have options there. Um, I could turn things into bullet pointed lists. So let's say I instead of this uh, just list of all these social networks here, I wanted these to actually be uh, a bullet pointed list. Um, and let's just pretend that this continues on perfectly. What I would do is I would highlight these and then right here you'd see bulleted list and it'll turn it into that. I could also make it a numbered list if for some reason you wanted numbers, if you were doing rankings or anything like that, that would be a good option for that. Um, you have this option right here of a block quote. So let's say I have a quote here where um, I'm really excited about the opportunity to take students to the park, Lasting Games said. So I could actually highlight this and then if I hit that block quote, it's going to indent it a little bit. And you're going to notice once we publish this or we see the options when we publish this in preview, um, this is going to show up a little bit differently. You, of course, can just do regular quotes. And this should be reserved for uh, really for scannable opportunities. If someone said something that you really want to stand out, you might consider this block quote. Otherwise, just put a regular quote in if you're going to be doing that. Um, another thing you could potentially do is you can do like a vertical line or hor I mean a horizontal line um, that helps break things up. Again, it needs to be relevant to what it is you're doing. Um, you have other options here with alignment. I would suggest you keep everything aligned left. Um, that's really just the best way to keep things going. But you have underlines here. Um, you can change the text color, although I would tell you... Um, really use caution when doing that. Crazy text colors can be really, really hard to read. So just keep that in mind as you're, you're going along with that. Okay, so now I have uh, gotten all this done and um, now let's say I'm ready to go and I'm ready to add my image and add my links because as you know, with every, um, with every blog assignment or every blog post, you have to have uh, image and link. 
Um, so I'm going to go in here and to add an image, what you have to do is click on add media and it depends on where your cursor is because that's where WordPress is going to put your image. So let's say I want it to go right here at the very beginning. I would click add media and then I'm going to have to upload the image. Again, this is an original image that you have taken yourself or an image that you found in creative commons that you have the right to use and that you are going to attribute properly. Um, so I have an entire folder here of images from Bastrop State Park. Um, and so let me, let's just grab this one, uh, for instance. So you're going to have some options here in terms of uh, customization with this. So for the title, um, I might write flowers at Bastrop State Park. I have an option to put a caption here. Um, if you are getting something from Creative Commons, this is where you would insert um, that attribution uh, with the license and the uh, photographer's name and things along that. I don't think I need a caption for this in particular, but if you did want a caption, that's where you would do it. The alt text applies not only to uh, search engine optimization, but also um, for accessibility for um, uh, visually impaired uh, reader. So putting some alt text, um, flowers, Bastrop State Park, it just allows uh, to know what is happening there. And then description, again, you could start adding like keywords there if you wanted to. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave that blank for now. Um, and then you have your settings for where you want it displayed. So you'll see I can either do left, center, or right. Um, I'm going to do left first and then we'll see what it looks like uh, once we get in there. Um, you do not want it linked to anything. What this means is, will the image itself be a link? So if I had just left it to where it said media file, that's the default. If somebody clicked on that picture, it would just open up that picture in another tab and have it be just the image. So we don't want that. We just, we don't want them to do anything with the image other than look at it. And then you also have to figure out the size. You can see the size of this image is really large. Um, 300 by 225 is probably a good uh, image size for that. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and click insert into post and you can see it inserted that image exactly where I wanted. It's left aligned, therefore the text is now wrapping around it. Nothing happens when you hover over it. It doesn't have a caption um, and the size looks okay uh, moving forward with that. So if then once you click on the image though, you can now go in and edit as well. So if I wanted to move this to the right, you can see now everything is wrapping around it and it's right aligned or centered. It would push everything down underneath it. So I would suggest either left or right alignment for all of these. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make it right aligned. Just uh, again, just that's my own personal preference. You can do uh, whichever you would like. So that's how you would add an image. Um, and then the last part is adding a link. So I definitely want a link to Bastrop State Park. So I go here to Bastrop State Park's website and I grab the URL. And now I go back here and to add a link, you have to highlight the part that you want linked. And then you'll see this uh, link icon right here and it says insert edit link. Um, I'm gonna copy and paste that and before I go ahead and hit this apply, I wanna click on link options because I wanna take a look at what's happening. Um, and if you are sending people away from your site, you always want it to open in a new tab because if you don't, it will let them leave your site and they leave all uh, trace of your site, right? If you have them opening the link in a new tab, your site is going to remain in that tab and it's just gonna simply open a new tab with the uh, where you're sending them through the link. So that would definitely be what I wanna do. And then I hit update and you'll now see that this has become underlined as part of a link. Um, so that's really it. Um, you know, this is kind of what yours will look like once you have it ready. Um, you know, you'll have different placement of things and you'll have, um, you know, different options throughout. So I encourage you to uh, experiment a bit with these uh, icons, um, you know, try things, see what you like, see what you don't like. Um, a couple of other things to talk about really quickly. One is categories, which you can see we have a ton of categories on the School of Journalism site or on the School of Journalism blog. 
Yours may not have this. Uh, yours may not have any categories other than uncategorized. So you can create categories if you want. So for instance, if you were doing a photography blog, um, one of your categories might want to be, uh, you know, Q and A. One might want to be DIY. One might want to be tips. Um, you know, and then you could categorize whatever your post is about based on the content. That will be on an individual basis. And then the last thing is tags. And tags, again, um, help with search engine optimization, which we'll get into later in the semester. Um, they also help people find other related content on your uh, blog. So I might want to add a, ba uh, a tag for Bastrop. I might want to add a tag for mobile storytelling. And then possibly my name. Um, and that way it can let people know what this blog is about and other related blogs as well. So once you have all that set up, now you're on the home stretch. You have a couple of options right here. Um, the first option is you can choose to schedule your post if you would like. And really the only time I would encourage you to do this is if you're doing your assignment in the middle of the night. You probably don't wanna post your blog in the middle of the night, so you might wanna schedule it to the next day. Um, so if I wanted to do that, I could just type February 5th, and have it post at you know 9:28 in the morning. So if I wanted to do that, um, now it says schedule for February 5th at 9:28, and you'll see this has now changed to schedule. Um, the other thing you can do is you can click on preview. So if you click on preview, it's actually going to take you to what it's going to look like. Um, so we can walk through here and take a look at everything we've done. You'll see the images here; it's right aligned. Notice there's no caption or anything. Uh, because um, we didn't put a caption in. If we had a caption, this would have like a gray background around it with the caption in it. Um, you'll see here's our subhead. Um, here's that horizontal line that we put in, and here's that block quote. Uh, here's the bullet pointed list, or actually this is the numbered list now. We have our headline, we have our body. Um, so, and then here's uh, all the tags that were put in. And I didn't add a... A category to this but if I did it would show up right here uh, so that's it that's how you make a blog post and I just encourage you to experiment with this everyone's is going to look a little bit different based on your content and the theme you selected for your blog um, so a lot of options a lot of customization that's available within WordPress